On overdrive this week, we take three of Kawasaki's newest import bikes for a spin. Auto selector with Bert in the automotive happenings this week. And Shumi gets his hands on a mighty beast from Bavaria. Hello and welcome to Overdrive, I'm Shireen Bhan. Kawasaki has been on a bit of an offensive in India, launching three new CBUs around the Auto Expo. So Jamshed, Shumi and Alan decided to pick one each, take them on the road to find out if they really are practical enough for India and at the same time decided to have some fun as well. Let's take a look. For Overdrive's 300th episode, Bertie took three drop drops and went for a drive and they had a good time. But as far as I'm concerned, these are the true drop tops because on a car you have to do complicated things take the roof off make the chassis strong enough so that it doesn't flex this is what it was meant for the open road the open sky this is what the experience is so today I have with me the new Kawasaki Ninja 1000 we have, this is one of three motorcycles we have with us Alan and Jamshed are also riding the Z800 and the Z1000 we're going to head out do some highway do lots of twisties hopefully some bad roads because you can't avoid bad roads in India and see what really works in the real world now, why did I pick the Ninja 1000? Well, I think this is going to prove to be the most comfortable, most effective motorcycle in the real world. Is that how it turns out? Well, we find out. Out on the highway, the Ninja 1000 feels distinctly at home and no surprise, it is meant to be a sport tourer after all. It has slightly softer, more supple suspension and very likeable power delivery. Now both this and Jumpshed Z1000 share a 1043cc liquid cooled inline 4 engine. Both will make 142 PS of power at 10,000 RPM and 111 Newton meters of peak torque at 7300 RPM. But in feel and effect, these bikes are dramatically different. The Ninja is far more chilled out and it does have more relaxed steering geometry and effortlessly at home in every condition. The Ninja 1000 also gets 3 more traction control and 3 power modes which neither of the Zs get. The more I ride the Ninja 1000, the more I think in fact that I made the right choice. So Shumi's already moved ahead with the Ninja 1000 and what I have is this. This ladies and gentlemen is the Z1000. Now in every possible conceivable way this is the more extreme of the two motorcycles. Now it's got the same engine but apart from that everything is drastically different. It's sprung much more stiffer, the power delivery is much more savage and there's absolutely no traction control and gimmicks to control this savagery from this mill. Well I think I'm gonna have the more fun of these three and well Shumi's already pulled ahead so that means I have a bit of work to do. <laughs> Z1000 is actually a transformer. Almost any minute now, it's going to get up on its robotic extensions and attack everything on the road. Well, at least it seems that way. This aggression is thanks to the Sugomi styling, which lends the Z1000 its distinctive predatory look. Its engine has new, more aggressive ECU settings which gives it a sharper throttle response while a new shorter final drive gearing provides quicker acceleration and makes riding it tremendous fun. But this does have a downside as on the highway where all you want to do is cruise at a comfortable speed, it is reluctant to oblige. It constantly wants to be kept on the boil. This is the little Z800 from Kawasaki and while 803cc may not sound like little on a motorcycle, it's the smallest of the three CBUs that Kawasaki have just launched. Jamshed and Shumi have pulled rank on me and taken both those bikes out on the road and gone ahead. But I think I have the better deal. Uh, while it may be smaller, it is a smaller package. It's easier to throw around on the roads that we're going to be going through. And with the gentler power delivery, I don't think I'm going to need traction control and uh, power modes like on the Ninja 1000. Uh, Oh, I think I'm going to be faster than them as well, so all that's left is for me to get onto this motorcycle and go and catch them. Z800 is the most affordable four-cylinder bike you can buy in India today. Having said that, it still manages to look and feel like a proper big bike. Z800 isn't very light at 231 kgs, but that's quickly forgotten as soon as the ride begins. The bike feels compact and nimble and after some brief acclimatization you get the confidence to cut through city traffic with impunity.
The 806cc engine is delightfully smooth and once you blip the throttle, the engine responds urgently and with plenty of the oral delight we Indians love from our four-cylinder motorcycle. The Z800 isn't some toned-down, commuter-friendly bike. It is still very much a sharp and involving machine. While it may not be as ultimately exciting in the way it generates pace as compared to the Z1000, it still has the potential to keep the rider happy for a very long time. Challenge Shumi, the Shumi has buzzed off and I think it's a good thing that we are waiting over here. Let him think that he's like really fast and we are trying to catch up. Meanwhile, it's just the both of us so we can you know, stop and chill and yeah, let I him think that's, in the distance. I think that's I'm a good thing. I'm actually quite uh, impressed that on an 800 you managed to catch up with the 1000. Oh yeah, I kind of like it. The power delivery is kind of gentle so I'm able to get on the gas earlier. I can hold decent speeds on the highway and uh, it's quite good on bad roads as well. Well, I think I must admit that the true terrain for the one is the Z1000 isn't the highway because when I'm on the max, I'm in the top gear, I always feel that, you know, the top gears are just too short and I always feel that I need one more gear. Uh, apart from that, the suspension is like really, really stiff. The thing is, on the highway, when you're at a higher speed and you hit a bump, I think this thing really doesn't take it too well and I think your back uh, takes most of it. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's not keep Shumi waiting too much. I yeah, think, uh, I think we'll drink back. up and try and catch up with him. Yeah. Like with most naked, anything above 140 kmph becomes a physical struggle against the wind blast. And the Z's are no different. While Shumi took off on the highway, both Alan and I couldn't possibly keep up with his pace due to wind resistance. The other issue is that both these motorcycles are sprung quite stiff and that means we couldn't simply glide over the potholes the way Shumi's Ninja 1000 did. Of course, both the Z's don't get traction control or power modes or any such gimmicks but I see that as a silver lining because we can do this. Sometimes I wonder why I gave the other two geniuses fast motorcycles because all they seem to be doing is going even slower than usual. Maybe I should have just given them smaller motorcycles. So in the meantime, here I am. I have uh, ridden a fair amount of highway miles on this the Ninja 1000 so far. I've done a lot of twisties. I've done a lot of bad roads as well. And uh, while we wait, let me tell you about uh, what the Z1, the, the Ninja 1000 does really well. The names are really confusing. Um, the Ninja 1000 is somehow a little softer sprung than the Z1000. So on bad roads, what it is able to do is absorb some of the punishment and that makes riding it so much more peaceful. And the fact that there is a fairing in front also allows you to sustain higher speeds with much less fatigue. And in fact, uh, the reason why I am faster than them could simply be the fact that I can actually sit at higher speeds without the wind buffeting, without worrying about what the road conditions are like. And they simply cannot. I think the only thing about the Ninja 1000 is it's just not as sexy as the Z1000. So when you park the two of them together anywhere, that gets all the attention and this thing is just like this big green motorcycle that was also there. All three bikes are priced spectacularly for all that they offer. The fit and finish on the bikes is simply immaculate and Kawasaki seems to have put in a serious thought on every detail, every part. These three imports join the other two full imports, the ZX-10R and the ZX-14R, but they may as well make far more sense than these machines in more ways than one. Well, our ride came to a poetic conclusion as we assembled at dusk after a day of riding in every possible Indian condition. Were we impressed? Absolutely. So we've had a good time coming up here and all that's left is actually to head home and uh, it's time for us to compare notes and uh, check uh, how we felt about our motorcycles. Alan, would you like to begin? Uh, yeah, you all guys pulled rank on me and uh, stuck me oh. with, the smallest, with the smallest bike but uh, I, don't, I can't say I'm disappointed. I think the Z800 was uh, pretty good on all the roads that we rode through and uh, it also saves me 4 lakhs uh, over both of these bikes. But I think you get to a stretch of road where you'll always think that maybe I want a little more power. A little more power, yeah, but uh, 113 PS is not that bad and uh, I was pretty happy with, with the power that I had uh, on my right wrist. So. No, I, actually I, I agree with him there. That's got about 113 PS, these things do about 140. 
it's not power you can use in the country to be realistic. When you find a highway empty, completely empty, what is the maximum going to do? 130? They all do it with great comfort and uh, there's no sense of strain from that. But what that thing has is it's a very comfortable motorcycle and it's able to absorb the worst parts of the road really well. And what that does is allow you to stay at higher speeds for longer with much less fatigue. And since I was riding it, that makes, I think, the Ninja 1000 the best motorcycle. Okay, well, I'm going to disagree with you and say at least that this is the best looking motorcycle of this lot because well naked bikes weren't really my thing but these bikes actually changed that uh, for me completely it, it, it is I agree it, it is a spectacular looking motorcycle I mean the amount of aggression that that thing has out on the highway I rode it for a short stint and uh, people look at it in the rear view mirror and you don't have to be going fast or doing anything aggressive it's not like you're pulling a giant wheelie in his rear view mirror but he sees those eyes in the rear view mirror and he's out of your way that yes I mean that thing people sort of ignore they think there's like a ninja 650 or something coming at you it's only when it's closer that they realize, yeah, it's something much larger. Well, okay, the sun's going down, and I think I saw some uh, strawberry and cream on the road, and I'm going to race there. I'm going to race you guys out there. So that, that's the thing about overdrive, right? He's into strawberry and cream, and we're into motorcycles. <laughs> Three mean machines and all three very usable on our roads. It is getting a lot better for motorcycle enthusiasts in this country. On that note, we are going to head into our first break. But don't go anywhere because Bert will be back to answer your queries on Auto Selector. We're back in a jiffy. Stay on with us. You're watching Overdrive.